My name is Xin Gao. I'm from um, Flying China Magazine, a publication of um, Flying Pages. Um, that's the organizer of the E-Fly Expo. Um, I'm honored today to uh, introduce the uh, electric aviation situation in China and um, uh, a little bit about um, the, uh, the Chinese um, electric airplane called RX-1E. Um, unfortunately, the RX-1E team, uh, they had to leave the show earlier to uh, meet some component suppliers in Europe, so they could not be here today. So, just a disclaimer, I'm not associated with the RX-1E team, I'm a journalist, and I just uh, today to share something we know about this airplane, the certification process, and uh, the, uh, the situation of electric aviation in China. So, thank you. Um, so first, um, my presentation today is going to be um, divided into two, three, uh, into three parts. The first is a general introduction of electric aviation situation in China. The second part will be an introduction of the RX-1E certification as an example of China's electric airplane. And then the third part will be uh, the China's uh, regulatory perspective of, uh, of uh, electric aviation. So um, the first question would be, um, why do China want to uh, promote um, electric aviation? So why China wants to be a player right now? Actually, in my view, the question could be better presented as why not? Uh, because um, in my view, China has all the bases to get into this electric aviation. The first um, is that, as we all have known, China has already be a, a large electric aviation player in the world. Now we're talking about um, drones, UAV. And um, so if we include electric drones into this game, now we have name as DJI or UNIQ. Uh, DJI um, has been and is still nowadays the largest manufacturer of a consumer level uh, drone in the whole world, uh, followed by UNIQ. And both companies are from China. So, and nowadays, uh, the electric drone is like crazy in China in terms of commercial application, uh, like especially in agricultural, uh, like spray, everything. Um, so, if we take that into account, we can see China has a good solid ground. And as I will introduce a little bit later on, the UNIQ has already been into this manned electric aviation scenario. So China has a uh, pretty good solid ground into this electric aviation at large. And the second factor is uh, the public concern for air quality and the pollution, as we all know. Now China might be the best place in the whole world to train IFR flight because the, the air quality is so bad, you can't really see anything. So all parts there have to fly into this um, smog. Um, all right, that was a joke. Um, but the um, uh, the public's concern for air pollution in general does um, provide a very good public awareness and the ground for anything associated with environmental friendly, such as electric aviation. So now we have a good uh, public support. And the third factor is uh, China, uh, the Chinese central government's so strong promotion and support for anything even remotely looking like high technology or innovation because China is now struggling to, uh, um, uh, to develop, to grow into a really uh, industrial economy rather than those outsourcing economy. So they really want to promote innovation. As, we ha uh, as I give the presentation this morning uh, at this China breakfast, um, now, general aviation is officially included in the China central government's 13th uh, five-year plan from 2016 to 2020. So, and the, central, the China central government wants to develop the general aviation industry into one trillion on the market size. That means one uh, 1,400 billion. That's a, that's a B. 1,400 billion euro market size. And in this uh, process, the central government specifically mentioned the new energy aviation technology. 
in this uh, grand planning for China's general aviation development. So, uh, electric aviation has a good, um, solid um, basis from the general pub, from the general uh, public, and also from the uh, government. Um, and the third reason is a market demand. Um, to admit or not, China now is pretty much a market economy from many senses. In this sense, um, China is a lack of pilots. China ordered over 1,400 airline uh, airplanes from Boeing and Airbus, and that translated into several tens of thousands of pilots and capital in demand for the next 50 years. So there's a very good market for pilot training. And electric uh, airplane is uh, very good cost effective in this sense. So there's a very good market. As I will introduce a little bit later for this RX-1G, that's also their main reason for this project, for pilot training. So now we have all these factors. Now we can see that electric aviation has a very good, uh, at least a ground uh, to grow in China. So now let me uh, get into, um, of course, uh, if anyone has any more questions about the China's general aviation in general, uh, or uh, electric aviation, uh, I'll be happy to answer the question later on. So now uh, let's move to this um, RX-1E example. And actually, uh, what that RX-1E is, is not the first um, Chinese electric airplane. A unique, that's, a, that's also a Chinese, 100% on the China, or on the Chinese um, private companies. They were pretty much into this electric aviation many years back. Uh, Unic uh, designed and made a prototype called E430. And that airplane is, um, was a pure electric two-seater, uh, light sport aircraft level um, airplane, and that airplane won the uh, prestigious Lindbergh uh, Electric Aviation Prize, or in short, LEAP Prize, about, if I remember correctly, five years ago. So that was really prestigious award, even for any electric aviation project. So that was owned by Unique, a Chinese company. Um, however, that project remained to be a prototype, and RX-1E uh, is the first Type certified electric life sports aircraft in the whole world. And as we can see, uh, they, oh, by the way, um, I borrowed this uh, presentation slides from RX1E team, so I will leave the judgment to you. Um, some content, contents may not be fully neutral, I just uh, have to say that. Um, so that's the contents. They are this, uh, these, the, uh, the RX1E. Uh, this airplane actually was at the Aero two years ago. They brought this airplane here two years ago, and the team was here uh, last year and also this year. And I myself test flown, test flown this uh, airplane in China two years ago. So that's the uh, what this airplane looks like. It's a two-seater light sports aircraft. So we can see this uh, general introduction of RX-1E in the background, which exactly reflect what I just said. The, uh, the, the background of why they want to develop this RX-1E. And by the way, the chief designer of RX-1E project um, was a member of China's Academy of Engineering. So that says something about the uh, importance of this project and the emphasis of the Chinese, um, uh, emphasis of the Chinese companies on the electric aviation. Also, that uh, translates into the uh, successful manufacturing and certification of uh, RX-1E because uh, once we have uh, a, a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering to back up this project, you get a lot of resources. So, um, they, as we can see here, the RX-1E aircraft got a type design approval, that's equipment of type certified, a TC, and the production PC from CAC. CAC is the China's equivalent of ASA and FAA. So uh, RX-1E is now type certified and in serial production. As of today, as I know, as far as I know, there are about uh, five or six RX-1E has already in operation in China, but only in China right now. And now they plan to have an annual production rate about 20 RX-1E in this year. And they've already ordered the components for at least 20 
Air uh, RX One E airplanes, but they only now they only operate in China right now. So that's the uh, timeline of RX RX One E uh, project. Uh, by the way, I just have to emphasize again, I'm not here to promote RX One E project. I'm not associated with the team. I just want to use this example of how uh, a Chinese company could get the um, uh, electric LNC certified and just show you the uh, landscape of uh, China's electric air, um, airplane certification process. So there's the, um, the timeline, so you can see oops, you can see this, pro this certification process began in 2012, and they got the uh, P type certificate and the P production certificate at the end of 2015. And last year they produced about five or six airplanes, and this year they plan to um, produce about 20. So that is the uh, the timeline. So in total, uh, the certification. By the way, this is only a timeline for the um, the certification, and the whole airplane project lasts about over longer than this. Yep, that's the uh, the process. That's the uh, the basis. And uh, this old gentleman, he is the chief designer for this project, the member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering. Now he's uh, over 70 years old, but he still works six days, a, uh, six days a week. By the way, the whole team, this whole project team worked six days a week. So that shows how uh, uh, the Chinese is so eager about to this, uh, catching up this electric aviation train. Um, and they don't get paid for this overtime. So they basically followed um, the general certification requirement for light sports aircraft as well for the electric uh, components. They followed the AST uh, standards. That is the, the, uh, the compliance and standards for uh, light sports aviation, uh, air, light sports aircraft. So you can see that um, the rx one ds type, type certification process is compliant with um, this part of uh, the regulatory standard. Uh, that is the standard for uh, light sports aviation. Um, this shows uh, what standard they choose. That's pretty much a standard for, um, for light sports aviation. What's interesting is um, what they used to certify their electric components. Um, and here is the, all the, um, the ASTM standards they, uh, they used to get certified. And the most important one is this one, ASTM uh, 2840. That is the standard practice for electric propulsion units for light sports aircraft. And uh, that is the most important one. And uh, just as a background information, the light sports aircraft uh, is type certified in China, so it's not the UL or ultralight. So the CAC is in charge of the certification. It must be type certified. However, it's the regional office, the regional airworthiness standard office. Um, that is the equivalent. That's the equivalent of AA, F, AA's AFSDO. Uh, office in charge of the certification. So this RX-1E uh, airplane was certified not by the uh, central, I would say not by the central government, but at the original airworthiness standard office. So which means uh, the, the, the actual certification technical work could vary from region to region. And remember, uh, uh, China is a big country as large as the whole Europe, and the whole country is divided into seven regional airworthiness standard offices, which means uh, each office could, could have their own judgment on some uh, practices. And that is uh, the uh, type uh, design approval uh, from CAC to um, RX-1E. As we can see, it was issued at the end of 2012. That's just some fancy photos, and uh, these are the uh, test for pilot of RX-1D. So they did 
follow the、uh, procedure for a standard light sports aircraft certification process. They did all the、um, required test flight, a、uh, test flight project, a subject, including spin and the never exceed project.、Uh, by the way, on your chair there should be a, a flyer about all the、uh, specification and performance data about、uh, RX1E, so you can take a look. And in at the end of 2014,、uh, the party, the representatives from the CAC and the LGAA, that's the、uh, name, the, the research institute for X1E in north eastern part of China, very close to Russia.、Um, so cold place, cold place to test out the、uh, battery. So the major components of X1E are from Europe. For the prototype and for the certification, and as far as I know, the、uh, motor is from Slovenia.、Uh, the battery was from Qualcomm, and, but uh, the um, the whole airframe is manufactured in China. Okay, so that's a、uh, short present. That's the、um, the short introduction of our Swan E. Now this team. Uh, is undergoing a major,、uh, I would say, overhaul of these aircrafts.、Uh, even if they got these、uh, orders, of over 20、uh, airplane orders to、um, of、uh, to deliver, now they are going to、uh, provide an extended range model, almost double the、uh, battery capacity, and also they are undergoing, they are、uh, developing this hybrid. Um, propulsion system, and as far as I know, there's also a four-seater model is undergoing. The four-seater will probably will be obviously hybrid. So you can see that、um, this is a serious team. Their their main background resource is from a university, is from the university, as and also from the government fund.、Um, as far as I know, there's no private funding in this project. That means a very strong government support. For this electric aviation, so the support is really from the government. And finally, some、um, some brief introduction about the electric aviation regulatory、uh, prospects.、Um, today,、uh, the China's uh, civil air, air civil、uh, administration, that's called the CAC, that's equivalent of ASA and FAA, does not have a roadmap or timeline. For this electric aviation certification、uh, standard,、um, they, however, they do have the、uh, the planning and, and and ambition to support electric aviation in general. So, which means they will evaluate and review each electric aircraft project in a, on a、uh, case by case basis instead of、uh, a, a general certification standard. So that is why we can see that RX1E、uh, certification was done by a regional、um, stand, airworthiness standard office instead of the、uh, head office, because、um, I,、uh, I know that the、uh, CAC head office is still struggling with the some technical prospect of this electric aviation.、Um, but their view is very clear: they want to support the、uh, electric aviation because that's part of the central government、uh, planning. Uh, and、uh, they want to get the job done, but they do not know how to do the、uh, the job properly. So they leave lots of、um, technical technical、um, practice to、uh, the regional office. So、uh, that's a very、uh, brief introduction of、uh, China's electric aviation market status.、Uh, oh, by the way,、um, they want to use this RX1E for、uh, primary、uh, flight training. At the、um, in these flight schools, and most orders are from flight schools, and、uh, instantly that also match、uh, the, the primary purpose of these、uh, airplanes. Also match what the Pipistro and the, the Swiss project are undergoing. As you, some of you have already、uh, here were here earlier today, that、uh, the Swiss、uh, and Pipistro are are, are joined force to、uh, have this trial project for. Electric aviation for primary training in Swiss. So that's actually、um, RX1. That's exactly what X1 is doing right now,、uh, and for the next step.
and that's the primary uh, factor behind all this electric aviation uh, and of this HX1E project. So um, I think I'm pretty much done with this brief introduction. Uh, if any of you have any spe specific questions, I'd be very happy uh, to hear the answer. And, um, and another good news is that uh, the, 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 the publisher for this magazine, Flying Pages, the organizer of the EFY Expo will, is going to um, present to donate the EFY Award afterwards, later on. So please stay uh, seated just for a little while and we will see who will win the prestigious EFY Award for this EFY Expo. So um, thank you very much uh, for your time. That's all. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you. So, hello, we are, so if somebody has a question, we can do a question and answers. Otherwise, the E-Flight Award will be, as now the prize receivers are also not yet here, as it's planned for 20 minutes past four. So, uh, you may remain uh, here or you may go for a little walk because in a short second, uh, we will start uh, to give this uh, award, I'm still waiting right now. Um, while the time, let me come up to the stage. Yep. So a bit, bit of So uh, we just have one little point which we want to remind you uh, that we will have uh, similar, so for those who are in the electric flight area and for those who are also looking uh, for all the news which are happening in electric, we have the um, electric flight forum which we like we have here at Aero in a reg on a regular basis, we will have one uh, in future, at the end of this year, in China, and the probably in Beijing. That's not decided yet. But as you have seen, there are quite some news, and so we are really looking forward um, to what's going uh, on in China in the future in electric. And you can imagine, while when you go through the halls here, and you, when you see all the news on electric in different aircraft which have been uh, presented. We, it wor was quite a challenge for us to find out which is uh, the price to give, to, uh, which is the project to give to pr the price. So we, would, we did have, for example, the first, very first electric hybrid seaplane, the Equator, was very close in being uh, donated the price. We also did have other uh, projects like the new version of the Volocopter, which is very nice looking, will be flying soon, and is the very first multi-copter, manned multi-copter, which has a certification to fly. So, but in the end, we saw it after nine years having the E-Flight Expo and the E-Flight Expo Award here, we saw it, okay, um, what can be the next step? And we decided, after a longer discussion, that the next step is not just another aircraft, because there are a lot of nice, neat aircraft, but uh, one presentation here, an idea which we just got short before the show, and which was, was presented here, was for us a real uh, challenge. So, uh, and we think this is the next step which has to follow. So Mark, if you could come up to the stage. Uh, I think so.
<laughs> We're just waiting for uh, for the person uh, as we had this tradition since last year and I like the idea and we had several people who liked the idea who wrote up afterwards because like we're talking here about the avi aviation of the future uh, we thought a pilot of the future should donate uh, this award so Nick if you come up to the stage with the prize uh, because we really think, so Mark, uh, we really think this is a way of aviation of the future uh, because he uh, presented us a project with 10 airfield, solar power, electric aircraft flying around so you can do your training purely on an electric aircraft and this is the future and if this project, the most challenge is you have to get all the permissions, you have to get all the people behind you, you have to get the aircraft, that's why Pipistrel is with us at the stage, because without the aircraft you can't do flight training, and uh, now we are ready to get electric pilot flight, so congratulations to you, and congratulations to you on behalf of Pipistrel, because like I said, without electrical offer wouldn't be possible. Thank you very much.